We're talking tech saturation on this tech edition of Industry Focus. Greetings, fools. Sean O'Reilly here at Fool Headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. It is Friday, January 15th, 2016, and joining me to chat global uh, technology saturation, as always, is the, uh, I don't know, only editor that I know can throw a baseball at 85 miles an hour. No, oh, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a th good. throwback to my high school days. I appreciate that. Yeah, you bet. Um, I actually was going to ask you, uh, Dylan, what, uh, do you have a specialty, like a special pitch, like As a curveball, fastball? I was, I, was I was a curveball. Pitcher. You're kidding yeah, me. Yeah, no, I was like crafty. I didn't, I was oh, kind of like, no. I was like a paint the corners kind of guy. Yeah. Really? I was going to no. make like a mean fastball guess, but. No. No. You didn't like spit on your palm or anything sneaky, did you? No. I could throw a pretty decent like mess around knuckleball. Like I wouldn't throw it in a game, oh but my like, gosh. like hanging out You're in the throwing the crazy pitches. hanging out in the bullpen, you know, oh like my during gosh. practice and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh well we're starting off today with smartphones mm -hmm. and what's going on there and a bit of a lead in. Best Buy reported holiday sales and they were not pretty. Um and this is for smartphones. Yes. Domestics? Well, well, they reported holiday sales in general, right, but, but the, then they the particularly down, ugly yeah. part of the report was... Lots of people buy. Is my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Domestic sales over the nine weeks ended January 2nd fell 1.2%, um, excluding north, new stores and closures year over year. Um, and according to the press release, the domestic decline was primarily driven by the mobile phone category. So they're actually calling out mobile mm -hmm. phone sales. Yeah. Um, do you think they're being a little weak there? Or are they just kind of blah? Like... Uh, so, I mean, they, they go on to say, like, excluding mobile phones, domestic revenue increased year over year due to our strong performance in health and wearables, home theater, and appliances. So, maybe they're warranted. Yeah. And and they actually do a segment-by-segment segment breakout here, and they look at some of the numbers. And um, domestically, the computing and mobile phone segment, which is actually what we're going to spend quite a bit of the show talking about, um, was down 7% from last year. And that's <sighs> lapping a 2% uh, decrease the year before. Everybody I know... we. Christine and James upstairs were talking about buying new phones. Like people are buying phones. What's going on here? Yeah, um, and that, that's the weird thing about it. It's like you, everyone you see has a smartphone, right. right? Everyone that you you know you know has a laptop or a tablet or something like that. You don't think of these as struggling businesses, right? But um, when did the iPhone six come out? The iPhone six came out earlier uh, this year, so that's not no, it. Well, so the the six um, S came out in the fall. Right, and the six. Came it was out. spring, right? Yeah, like yeah, okay. So, anyway. um, but uh, another piece of news, I think. So you know, you think about it, like the way that Best Buy was stating this is domestic, uh, but this is not just a domestic issue with these slowing growth rates. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and they are a component company uh, that makes chips that power the iPhones, uh, said that it expects Q1 revenue to be down 11% year over year, and that is due to soft demand for high-end smartphones. Um, and just to give you an idea of their relationship with Apple as it relates to their larger financials, uh, roughly 20% of their revenue comes from sales to Apple. Wow. Um, two other Apple providers, uh, Large and Precision, a uh, company that makes camera modules, and uh, Catcher Technology Co., a company that specializes in metal casings, uh, both have issued you know kind of similar guidance about what they expect for 2016. So what Best Buy said is clearly the tip of the iceberg. Um, what do you think is going on here? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? And um, I would think uh, this seems like something out of the onion. Like, yeah. there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, when you look at Best Buy, it's it's declines and it's you know there are a whole bunch of other competitive issues that play there, where you know something like Amazon creeps in, something like that. Um, to be that clear, was a bad example because only <laughs> fifty thousand buyers for Saul. I'm kidding. <laughs> but but to be clear, um, these are still growing markets. Right. The growth rates just aren't what they were. Right. And um, you know, IDC estimates that uh, the global smartphone market in 2015 grew 9.8 percent. Uh, growth was over 20 percent in 2014 year over year. Um, so this is actually the first year of single digit percentage growth year over Ever. year in the smartphone market for, yeah. globally. Uh, and so I think there's a couple things you can look at here. As reasons for why this is happening, um, one of the big things, like as you alluded to in our intro here, is saturation with the market. Um, like we talked about, everyone that you know has a smartphone at this point, for the most part. Yeah, um, I've had one since. When did you get your first one? Uh, probably four years ago. I got mine. I think it might have been iPhone. five, and I actually kind of got it because all my coworkers at. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, and I, I kind of had to because everybody else had it. So yeah, and the market uh, is much more developed here in the U.S. But part of the reason that we saw such explosive growth in 2014, uh, 2013 was the um, some of the developing parts of the world, China in particular. There were a lot of first-time buyers that were you know getting these devices, and so um, you know you think about the typical refresh cycle, the p 
particular uh, upgrade cycle for a lot of these devices, uh, usually two years, two and a half years, three years. Right. And so knowing that 2014 was a particularly um, big year for sales, uh, it's not surprising that 2015 is a little weak. Um, so that, that's one of the things. I, I think one of the other uh, big trends is obviously we're kind of in the mid upgrade wave for Apple products. Um, like you said, you know, right. the most recent product release was in the fall with success. Um, you know, we will be expecting the iPhone 7 to be coming out this year um, in the fall. And so, um, you know, that's keep, keeping with the typical calendar that Apple releases a new major upgrade to its line every two years. Isn't it funny that that's where I immediately went when you're talking about <laughs> lackluster sales and smartphones? It's like, wait a minute, when did the iPhone? Like, I, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a major barometer, right? And, uh, you know, the, granted, like the 6S had some cool new features, 3D touch, live photos, stuff like that. But it, consumers know that the big changes come when right. the number changes on the device, you know. Right. And so uh, I, I think that, you know, maybe the second half of 2016 will bode a little bit better for this market. My, mo- my mother just got the 6S, and there was some debate. I mean, she really wanted the newer one, but there was some debate like, okay, should we wait? Or the seven, you yeah. know. Anyway, I couldn't wait. Yeah, I know. I know you couldn't. <laughs> you, boy, you were so happy that day too. I was giddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and lastly, I mean, these are tough comps to be going up against. Like I talked about, right. you know, um, the the iPhone six and the iPhone six plus, you know, which was Apple's first foray into the phablet market, uh, did remarkably well. They were just awesome products. They they sold tons of devices. And so um, you are going up against really tough year over year comparisons um, in twenty sixteen. Right. And so uh, you know that's particularly difficult. So um, all that said, I think there are a few things to watch here. Um, you know, uh, most of the pessimism that I've seen, particularly that coming from Apple suppliers, uh, is really confined to like the first half of twenty sixteen, which isn't surprising because, like I said, the iPhone update will be coming out in the mm-hmm. second half of 2016. So, um, the second half should be much stronger. Uh, we'll get some insight from Apple um, as to what they expect for the year in terms of guidance. Uh, at the end of this month, uh, they report earnings. And so, we'll get some color there in addition to what they've done in the past with the holiday season and everything like that. Um, but I think one of the most interesting things, um, kind of Apple trying to get ahead of some of these trends and trying to maybe push the upgrade cycle faster than the two and a half years to three years that some consumers seem to be on is the uh, Apple iPhone upgrade program. Right. Where it's, you, know, you pay the monthly you know, yeah. $30 or so, and um, you can upgrade you know, yearly. Do you think that's a good deal? We did the math on it. I mean, if you're someone that uh, actively wants the best model and you are divorced from a uh, carrier a subsidy model, uh huh. Then it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, and and that is one other thing that I think uh, also comes into play with a lot of these numbers is you look at, you know, some of the major carriers. Like, uh, I mean, you you know the space a little bit better than I do, but most of them are moving away from allowing new customers to sign up for. It was a a big deal when Verizon did it. I knew the big things are happening because a little over a year ago, when I was doing this same show with uh, Nathan Hamilton, um, he started talking to me about what T-Mobile was doing this, and I'm like. I should switch to T-Mobile. Yeah. I switched to T-Mobile from Verizon because of the show and everything. Yeah. And then um, I didn't realize how big a deal or how quickly it would happen because now they're all. I mean, Sprint's begging for my mother-in-law to stay with them. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, even doing this sh- before we started doing the show, uh, before we came down to the studio, you know, talking with Christine um, uh, Harji is the healthcare uh, editor. Uh, you know, That's she- right, folks. <laughs> we do talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she had said, "Oh, you guys are talking about like you know iPhone update rates. Like I've I've had the same. She has an iPhone five. I've had the same iPhone for like three years. Yeah. And I was like, do you not have a subsidy through your carrier? She's like, no. So I don't like really want to pay right the six hundred and fifty dollars or so that it would cost uh, to get a new phone. And I think that that's one of the issues with the with all the carriers moving away from subsidy is a lot of people are so ingrained into that thought of like, okay, this new phone will cost me one hundred and fifty dollars through right. through my plan." And then you see the actual retail sticker price that that phone is worth, and right. without the subsidy model, you're paying six hundred fifty bucks. You're like, man, that's that's a lot of money. That was the thing that happened when I went in and did the the T-Mobile switch because it, the one way they can mitigate that is you know just no no interest two years you pay off the phone so it's you know six fifty divided by twenty four months and I'm paying I don't know twenty eight dollars I think a month. The second that ends, my cell phone bill gets really cheap, and it's going to be awesome. But then I'm going to want the new iPhone. Yeah, they're going like, to drop some ah, new features. No. <laughs> they're going to give me some wire, wireless headphones and all this stuff, and yeah. game over. Um, before we move on, um, this is completely out of the cuff and everything. Um, 
do you think there is any possibility that um, the lack of growth in the high? I mean, you were talking a lot about high end smartphones and everything, right? Like Samsung and Apple. Um, you and I both know Apple's profit margins on the iPhones are gaudy. They're beautiful. Yes. There is it possible that the the cheaper smartphones are starting to affect people's buying decisions with that. Is it possible that that might be rolling over a little bit? I think so. You're talking about Xiaomi and, yes, and some yes. some of the and kind of cheaper Chinese without, manufacturers. Without calling out any names, which you just did. So, yeah. <laughs> particularly in the yes. developing markets, though, yeah. where, where they're very popular. Um, I think there's something to that. Uh, I think that it is um, something that manages to like... I love how seamless the iPhone is as much as the next person. Yeah. Like I try to get away from it and I can't, but... Economics eventually sets in. You know what I mean. I, I think the, what you get with Xiaomi and some of those products, um, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on a smartphone, you get kind of like the minimum viable product that right. is also a smartphone and stylistically looks similar to an iPhone. Uh, so I get that. I do think that um, in China, in particular, um, that it's a very luxury oriented market, and so uh, there is going, going to always kind of be that huge divide between yeah. low end and high end. There's a reason the world's biggest coach stores in Beijing. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, I think uh, it definitely hurts. But uh, you know, maybe to counter that, it also gets people using smartphones as kind of an intro device. And then when they get a little more money, maybe they want the iPhone. Yeah. So, so uh, maybe it's a negligible net result for the high value right. um, smartphone manufacturers. We shall see. Okay. Before we move on, I want to point our listeners to the newly redesigned Focus.Fool.com. They'll discover a special offer to join the Motley Fool Stock Advisor newsletter to start your year off foolishly. All Loyal IF listeners have access to a special discount on Stock Advisor that works out to $129 for a full two-year subscription. Just go to Focus.Fool.com to take advantage of this offer. Once again, that is focus.fool.com. And pivoting over to the PC market, boy, we're just whomping on hardware today, aren't we? Yeah. Do you feel bad about it? Like a little bit, little but bit, I mean, yeah. you know, we're just we're just painting a picture. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have actually, I tried to get to go Mac when I got my PC or computer choice here at the Fool, and I couldn't because I'm just unfortunately Windows owns me. So anyway, yeah. Um, full disclosure, uh, I use a Mac at home. Uh, I use a ThinkPad here at work, so I, I like having. So you're a you're a bigamist with. <laughs> <laughs> I like having something that truly runs Office. You know, yeah. not a well, no, not version of Office, and not having to run parallels to be able to run the true version of Office. This is when I was on your tech con team. Do you remember the day I was trying the MacBook? Yeah. Do you remember that? And I, it was really what funny that it happened because that was the day the queue was huge. So, ladies and gentlemen, one of Dylan and I's other jobs is we edit articles that go out in fool.com. And I had a bunch of articles I needed to get through, and I wasn't quick enough on the <laughs> Mac. And I was like, dang it, I could be doing this if I was on the PC. And it definitely takes a little getting used to. It, Yeah. Especially if you are so ingrained in yeah. Windows interface. Because um, before that, I think the last time I had uh, used a Mac at any length was in the third grade. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny to think that. We like, all have. You're talking yeah. about the, like, the, like, the translucent, oh, yeah, kind of boxy playing, ones that yeah, they used to put in classrooms? Yeah, Oregon yeah. Trail and getting dysentery on Macs. <laughs> You have died of dysentery. <laughs> yep. Um, anyway, so switching over to the PC market, what's going on? So, uh, PC sales have fallen to levels not seen since 2007. Incidentally, uh, the year that the iPhone was introduced, uh, according Coincidence, to- Coincidence, Dylan? According to International Data Corp. Uh, and so, a uh, grand total was 276 million shipments in 2015 versus 308 million shipments in 2014. Um and we can look specifically at some of the shipment leaders here just to kind of give you an idea of what the market looks like. Uh, Lenovo in first place, uh, roughly 57 million shipments in 2015. HP in second with uh, just under 54 million. Dell in third, uh, 40 million. Apple coming in in fourth at 21 million. And Acer uh, bringing up the bottom of the top five with 20 million shipments. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think. Those shipment volume numbers are great, and just to give you a sense of market share and everything. But uh, I think the 2015-2014 growth is where one of the more interesting stories plays out. So, um, out of those five, Sean, how many of them do you think experienced year-over-year -year growth? One. Yeah. Did you oh, I didn't even look. I swear. <laughs> Did you cheat? No. <laughs> Hold on. You, you know who it is, right? Is it Acer? No. Is it, oh, is it Apple? It's, it's Apple. Apple. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all of the other ones experienced declines. I went with my gut. Yeah. And uh, cool. which is yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah. down. HP's down. Dell's down. And Ace. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so I figured. Good we'll, job, Tim Cook. Sorry. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about broadly what's going on here in the market, and maybe then get into some of the granularity of why some of these companies are better off. Um, similar to some of the issues that are plaguing the smartphone market right now. 
uh, PCs seem to be suffering from slower upgrade cycles. Right. Uh, that is like being a victim of your own success in a lot of ways, creating products that yeah. people want to continue to use that aren't breaking every four years right. and are just lasting longer. Um, so that's one of the struggles. I mean, do you have a personal computer? Uh, actually, I use the work computer, and then my wife and I share a computer at home, and that thing's. I've replaced the hard drive like it's old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it I, works. I'm like, I don't care, whatever. Exactly. I mean, I had, I'm just, I got a MacBook Air two summers ago, mm -hmm. and so I mean, like that, that's well within kind of what the PC industry wants in terms of an upgrade cycle, you know, like right? A, like a year and a half or so. But uh, before that, I think I had a Dell that I owned for like five years. A little indicative of this, um, I got, I, I literally just found this out the other day um, about Microsoft. Um, this is gonna bl uh, this blew my mind. Um, so this is kind of indicative because Microsoft is basically in every PC. So anyway, um, in the year ended June thirtieth, two thousand, uh, Microsoft's revenues were t just under twenty three billion dollars. Mm. Guess what their net income was after paying taxes and everything on that? Twenty three billion. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like four. Nine point four billion dollars net income. Okay. So that's actually a pretty good margin. That is insane. Yeah. Guess what it is today? On similar revenue? Their, no. <laughs> Their revenues for the 12 months ended September 30th, 2015. So tr last 12 months, not the year end of June 30th. Actually, let's just do the year. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Uh, year ended June 30th, 2015. $94 billion in revenue. Mm -hmm. So growing just under fourfold mm -hmm. on revenue. Um I'm going. There's a one-year charge there, but guess what their net income was that year? So I'm going to stick with the same margin profile I guessed before. So that was what uh, four million, four billion on twenty-three billion, roughly. So that's like yeah. one sixth. Yeah. So one sixth of ninety something, uh, like fifteen. Uh, twenty-two. Okay. Twenty-two billion. So so better than I thought, but that's a huge contraction. Yeah, that is a huge margin contraction. Yeah. Microsoft is having to work way harder. To make money, mm -hmm. and I I did not know that until like a couple of days ago, and my jaw hit the floor because I assumed Microsoft would be because um, their stock finally recovered in the last couple of years to where it was in two thousand. Mm -hmm. You remember? So anyway, that's just indicative of what's happened to PCs over the last fifteen years. Microsoft's having to work harder and harder and harder to make. I don't know, double like you know. Anyway, one of the interesting things uh, that I read in IDC's coverage of their shipment data, you know, they usually. You know, have some nice little research notes for me to kind of parse out the data and try to read between the lines a little bit. Um, one of our analysts talked a little bit about how Microsoft giving away Windows 10 as a freebie that upgrade. Need also, I say more? Also, might have been. Need I say more? <laughs> also, might have been a detriment to the PC upgrade cycle. And just think, in 2000, what were they getting per edition of Windows? Like two, three hundred dollars? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so the, the thought with uh, that analyst's note is that uh, the new operating system um, kind of refreshed the computer and gave people the sense of a new computer, even if right. it was the same hardware. Right. And so, you know, they weren't as willing to Made upgrade. Made you feel good. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, that's another reason for kind of explaining what's going on. I think also, um, you know, some people will always fall back on the strong dollar right. hurting um, some of these tech companies, which is valid, but that I always feel like that's a bit of a cop-out, just because yeah. it's something that affects any multinational. Right. Um, but I think more than anything else, it is staggering to me that uh, only one of the top five in terms of shipments has been able to buck the trend, and that's Apple. Right. Um, and I think that just goes to show how strong and sticky their ecosystem is. Yeah. Uh, you know that people are going to continue to buy iProducts because they love the integration. What's of the, the OS. market share now? Did you catch that? Uh, it is uh, as of 2015, seven point five percent. And that oh. is up from 6.3% in 2014. Very respectable. Yeah. Uh, they, they have a solid little carved out niche there. Um, you know, And just for context, Lenovo, the market leader is at just under 21%. So, cool. um, you know, they have a solid foothold there. But like I said, I mean, it is crazy to me to see only one company being able to buck such a huge industry trend. Yeah. Cool. Uh, just to side up for the Microsoft stuff, uh, they, that year last year did have a bunch of one-time charges, but throwing back back in, it was $22 billion. I think gap basis, it was like 12 but anyway. Yeah. They get sued all the time for antitrust <laughs> reasons, so your, anyway. Your, your uh, margin contraction point was still made. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I, 
Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Anyway, cool. All right. Well, thanks for your thoughts, Dylan. Always a pleasure. I'll see you later. Mm-hmm. That is it for us, folks. If you're interested in business development companies, also known as BDCs, be sure to tune in to Gabby LaPera's financial industry focus episode on Monday. As always, if you're a loyal listener and have questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. Just email us at industryfocus at fool.com. Again, that's industryfocus at fool.com. As always, people on this program may have interest in the stocks that they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal recommendations for or against those stocks, so don't buy or sell anything based solely on what you hear on this program. For Dylan Lewis, I'm Sean O'Reilly. Thanks for listening, and Fool on!